So uh, while I recognize the validity of many, many different forms of modeling, the basic distinction I'm proposing and uh, asking the world to consider is, uh, as a historical example, uh, Bateson, as part of the MRI Palo Alto group, uh, sent a number of extremely competent people to Phoenix, Arizona, with the purpose of capturing the astonishingly effective patterns of unconscious communication that Milton Erickson was known for. They came back enchanted. Uh, they came back with marvelous metaphors, stories which uh, still reverberate within the community, and not a single proposal about what the underlying structure of the patterning which made Erickson more so effective was. Uh, they spent lots of time doing it. It took Bandler and I a combined effort of some 10 months of filling up at the station in Phoenix with lots and lots of uh, unconscious assimilated patterns, carrying this unorganized heap of, 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 of absolutely not understood patterns, just imitations, with us to California, torturing whatever clients that came through our office by an application of these patterns using feedback from the client and trial and error to discover what actually worked. As part of this 10-month program of picking up, saturating ourselves with Ericksonian patterns, coming back to California and practicing them in a parallel context. And the result was, as you know, the two-volume work called Patterns the Hypnotic Techniques of Milton H. Erickson, of in-depth study with precise explication of the patterns which were the underlying structure of his enormous and uh, wondrous ability to communicate effectively with the unconscious. Take your choice. It's consequences. The one distinction I am requesting is for this unconscious assimilation practice and parallel context strategy to not be lost historically. I think it's important to find some way of making a distinction between analytic modeling and what I'm calling NLP modeling. The explicit criteria that distinguish the two are suspension of any attempt to understand, an unconscious assimilation without any filtering on the input side of it, and using the criteria and being able to replicate the competencies, the skill sets, and elicit from clients in parallel context the same thing that the genius, who's the source of the patterns, gets. When you've achieved, use those two criteria for the assimilation, and you've achieved the criterion of being able to replicate the genius's performance, this is the time to go click and switch on all those marvelous, sorry, click over here, all those marvelous uh, 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 conscious, analytic, comparative processes that you've worked your whole life to use as a way of refining your internal maps and seek a vocabulary to codify what you're already able to do. You now, of course, have two points of reference, the, the source themselves, the actual uh, genius, and your own replication. And f by triangulating, now you are faced with the task of dismissing those portions of the genius's behavior which are idiosyncratic and unnecessary to replicate the kind of the consequences, results that the person gets in the world. This is a complex process called coding. There must be a thousand effective codes, none of them true, all of them at variance with the reality. But your task is to develop those codes to the point where you can then pass the code to someone who's interested in, it, in uh, acquiring those patterns, those competencies, and you watch. If there's a convergence within a reasonable amount of time of the performance of the particular person who's been presented with the code, a convergence with the actual performance of the genius, you know you've got a code that's worth considering. Otherwise, you go back to the drawing board. The second part of NLP is application. There would be little point to the modeling other than self-indulgent, self-improvement on the part of the modeler, which is always worth considering, uh, unless there was an actual coding and transfer of the patterns to the public or that part of the public interested in having those skill sets. The sole unique justification, in my opinion, for all application of NLP patterns is the creation of choice. Um, that is the measure of the effectiveness of the application.